In the last video we have created this particular node here and now if you control shift click on it we can see that this node produced some weird nonsense. We can't put these into a shader. It is because these nonsense patterns are not meant to be textures to use in a shader. These are raw data and we're going to use these raw setup data to create our desirable scale armor. First things first, we need to create the height information for the scale. To do that, we simply put the UV in a separate XYZ node and use the Y channel as the height. We can then put this in a bump node to create the bump, or put it in a displacement node if you want to make some real displacement. However, now you can see that all the scales are perfectly sharp, we need a bevel at the edge of each scale, so how do we do that? It's actually quite easy. We use the factor here, Control shift click on the scale node three times to visualize the factor socket. We can see that each scale has a black to white gradient with the center being black and the edge is white. Put this in the color ramp node and bring the black key on the left side closer to the white key on the right side. Now we have a mask that marks the edge of each scale. Now we can subtract this from the height of the scale. However, the subtract is too strong, so we need to fix that. We multiply the mask with a weight value. Let's set this to 0 0.1. And you can see that each scale now has a bevel at the edge, but the bevel is perfectly flat. What if uh, the creative director wants a, um, a round bevel? So in that case, you can drop a RGB curve node. Now if you make a round curve, you get a round bevel. If you make a reversed round curve like this, you get a reversed round bevel. So you see we can get creative with these three sets of data to create a lot of variations for the scales. But I'm not going to get creative today. And uh, I, will, I will just stick with the flat bevel for this project, so I will delete the curve node. Now, you may have noticed, these scales are too perfect. Every single scale are mathematically the same. To fix this issue, we need to make some random tilt for each scale so that they don't look exactly the same. But how do we suppose to do that? If we put the UV of the scales into a mapping node and rotate around the z-axis, we can see that the scales now have a different angle, but all of them rotate exactly the same angle. How do we rotate each one of them a different angle? You can see this mapping node does not have any input sockets beside the vector. All we can do is set a constant angle to rotate everything exactly the same way. We must have some kind of input socket for the rotate angle so that we can put in a texture that represent the angle of rotation. And this texture should have a different value for each scale. This is where we have to dig up the high school math textbook again. If you paid attention to your math teacher back in high school, you're gonna really love this one. We're gonna build ourselves a custom vector rotation node using high school math. This is the formula to rotate a point in 2D space. Since we only use the y-axis for the displacement, we only create the nodes to calculate the y-axis. You can create the nodes for the x-axis by yourself using the same technique. Create a value node, label this one angle, and create two math nodes. This one is sine and this one is cosine, cos for short. Now connect the angle to both sine and cos. Now multiply the x value with sine and multiply the y value with cos. And add them together and that's it. Now we can test the result by changing the angle value here. You can see this value is in radiant unit. If we increase the value to 2 pi, the scales rotate exactly 360 degrees. Let's group these into a single node group. Rename the inputs to something understandable.
and rename the group to rotate Y or whatever in your language. Now we need to create a texture that carry the rotation values for each scale. In order to do that, we will use the center output of the scale node, put it in the vector socket of a noise texture and increase the scale value a little. Now we have a random value for each scale. Drop a color ramp node to increase the contrast a little. Now you can see this texture carry the values in the range of 0 to 1 and we need the range to be from minus something to plus something. So subtract 0 0.5 from the texture. Now we have a range from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and now we can multiply it with a weight value to increase or decrease the range to whatever we want. And finally put this in the value input of the rotate y node to rotate the scales randomly. Now if we zoom in really close to the thumbnail, you can see that there is a hole at the corner. So to create that hole, we need to reuse the calculate distance node that we made in the last video. Put in the UV and now we have a radial gradient starting at the corner. Now use the color ramp node to select the center area and combined it with the bevel masking using the maximum math operation. If you want to adjust the position of this hole, you can create a mixed RGB node and place it here. Set the blend mode to subtract and set the color to, to green and change the factor to adjust the position of the hole. Or you can just drop a mapping node which does a similar job using the Y location. I will use the subtract node here since it's smaller. So that's enough with the height. Let's move on to the color of the scale. Now we need each scale to have a different color. So we can reuse this node here which is the high contrast of the noise texture. We can use this as the factor to mix two different colors for our scales. Or we can use another color ramp node to make some weird color palettes for the scales. I'll stick with a simple two colors technique. Now put the whole mask in another math node and set the operation to less than and set the second value to 1. This will select the very center of the hole. We can now multiply it with a color to get a black shadow in the hole. Now we need an ambient occlusion for our scales. These areas here, they are lower and less light can come into these areas, so they should be a little darker. So create another calculate distance node and uh, this time put the UV in it. And uh, now we have a nice now we have a nice radial gradient starting from the very corner here. We can multiply this with the less than one math node and multiply the result with the color to make a nice ambient occlusion. The last thing to do is some dirt on the scale. We can put the UV data into a noise texture to make the dirt layer. However, the noise is exactly the same on every single scale and we want the noise to be different on each scale. If we use the original UV, now the noise does not repeat on each scale anymore, but now it is continuous throughout the entire model. The trick to making a believable noise is to add this noise to the UV of the scales, and then use the result as texture coordinate for another noise node. Now you have a nice randomized noise for each scale. You can add a multiply RGB node to further randomize the scale noise. Now we can use this noise to manipulate the roughness of the scales. The scale is now complete, but this is just one way to use the scale data coming out of the scale node. This is not some sort of constant like the laws of physics, so don't be afraid to experiment with the nodes and make some different results. So the scale tutorial is complete and the girl is properly protected. She is now ready for battle. This shiny armor can protect her from everything. Everything.
even modern weapons like lasers. So I hope you find this texture useful, there are more where that came from, but I'm gonna tone down the madness for a while now.